Hello again, friends. Welcome into Gamecock Central Radio. GamecockCentral.com presents Gamecock Central Radio with Kip Balk Knight twice a week here on Gamecock Central Radio. I'm your host, Emerson Phillips, and Kip joining us today to talk about this Gamecock series loss against the Georgia Bulldogs. Kip, we know playing on the road in the SEC is always tough, and that lived up to its billing this weekend. Yeah, it did, Emerson. I tell you, it's, uh, you know, looking back, though, to try to take some positives from the weekend, Clark Schmidt just came out and did a wonderful job on Friday night. Uh, throwing a complete game and after a tough North Carolina 15 nothing loss on the road in the midweek came out and just did a really really nice job of of saving the bullpen and getting them in a great position unfortunately Saturday Webb uh, just got off to a, had had an awful inning and uh, we just were never able to rebound but that's baseball that's part of it you're going to have those starts and as we've talked before it's uh, a big concern of mine has been just some of the depth of our bullpen and and guys that just really haven't pitched much, and um, you know we we're, we've been relying on just one or two guys out of that bullpen, and it's uh, it, it came back to bite us this weekend against Georgia, and hopefully uh, that we're going to have to we're going to have to start getting some other guys in there and getting them ready because we're we're going to need them down the stretch run. Uh, it's certainly evident and uh, certainly uh, showed this past weekend against Georgia. Real positive start to the Georgia series on Friday night. Clark Schmidt with a second career complete game, gave up just one run on five hits, struck out ten. Chris Cullen had an RBI in the second inning, and the Gamecocks picked up unearned runs in the third and fourth. Carolina beat Georgia 3-1. to one. But then on Saturday, Georgia jumped out to an 11 to nothing lead. They beat Carolina 13-4. to Braden Webb lasted just two and a third. He's been so good this year. But you talked here on Gamecock Central Radio last week about the fact that you know Schmidt and Webb have been outstanding Friday and Saturday starters, but they're not going to go seven or eight innings every weekend. And sure enough, Webb got touched up on Saturday, and Georgia did a number on South Carolina. Yeah, I mean, and you look at guys in the big leagues. I mean, you don't see Cy Young Award winners going 25-0. and or I mean, they, you know, they might win. 18, 19, 20 games, but they also may lose five to seven games. I mean, it really just depends. I mean, so the college season is obviously a third of the, of the size. It's a lot smaller, so things are magnified. But you can't expect your starters to go out and give you seven or eight innings every time out and give up two runs or less. So, uh, you know, we have to have, we have to be prepared for the inevitable, really. And, um, and Webb, you know, certainly hopefully he'll have a good bounce back start next week against Missouri. And uh, I'm certainly, you know, I'm sure he'll look back at film and see some things he maybe was doing wrong, and and uh, and try to make the adjustments. But that, that's what it's all about. It's a it's a short season in college baseball, but it's also a, a a long year. You can't dwell on just one loss, and you can't, uh, you know, you got to just try to make adjustments quickly. You can't you can't afford to go in a month long slump. That's the difference in college and professional baseball, and. Uh, you know, I'm sure Webb will be in the film room with Coach Myers and looking at things and trying to figure things out. But we, we've got to get three or four more guys out of the bullpen that are that are going to be prepared to pitch because that just it, it showed on Sunday against Georgia. We were in a great position, but once again, we, we we're having to rely on the same guys. And and uh, and I really like Tyler Johnson. I tell you, he's just he's got to he's got to keep throwing his fastball in when he kept throwing his fastball inside. Uh, you know, in, early in his outing on Sunday, he did a great job. He got guys out, but when he's throwing 92, 94, even though it's that fast, he, he throws a lot of fastballs that are chest high. And when you do that out over the plate, as you see, they'll, they'll go a long ways as they did in Georgia. And, um, you just got, you got to, uh, um, uh, he, he's got to get the ball fastball down the zone. So he needs to do something mechanically. He needs to work on that in the bullpen and try to get the ball down a little bit. Cox and Dog split the first two games, Friday and Saturday, and then in Sunday's game three, it was three to three in the eighth inning, and Georgia hit back to back solo home runs in the eighth and beat the Gamecocks five to three. So Kip, Georgia was four and eight in the league going in. The Gamecocks had a two game lead over Florida and others in the East, and now that lead has disappeared. Florida swept Arkansas this weekend. Uh, the Gamecocks will get Florida at home weekend after next. So things have tightened up in the SEC. Yeah, they've tightened up, but you know they they're in a great position. I mean, I'm sure Chad Holbrook was very uh, frustrated after this weekend, but but I, I guarantee you he probably made a positive spin out of it because you know these guys have. I mean, you look at John Jones and uh, Don Thompson Williams. I mean, they they've struggled a little bit here over the last you know four, five, six, seven games. So I mean, that, you know, to to go through a stretch to be where you are in the season. Um, you know, to be 11-4 in conference, 
ranked in the top 15. I mean, it, you know, you really, really couldn't ask to be in a better position. They're, they're in a great position. You look up and down the FCC standings in the East and in the West. And I mean, they're 22 and one at home. I mean, you know, seven and five on the road. There's so many teams in the FCC that don't have winning records on the road. I mean, they, if they do, it's just a little bit above 500. So, uh, they're in a good position. They just got to make some adjustments. And I think the biggest thing is, is, uh, you know, a couple of those, those hitters, John Jones, Don Thompson Williams, looking at some film, figuring out what the pitchers are doing to them differently now than they were in the first part of the year. And, uh, and, um, you know, just, uh, trying to make, trying to get hot. It's, it's time now to, to get ready to get hot for the stretch run. And it's, as Gamecock fans know, it's all about who gets hot at the end. So they're in a good position now, but, and they've got the meat of the uh, pack here left, and um, it's certainly going to be a, a tough couple weeks of SEC baseball. But they got to be focused on Wednesday night at Furman uh, in Greenville because uh, they'll sneak up and beat you as well. That's right. The Gamecocks play in Greenville on Wednesday night of this week against Furman that will be at Floor Field. Looking back on the Georgia series briefly, junior outfielder Gene Cohn was the Gamecocks' top hitter. He was 5 for 12 with two runs knocked in. He had a homer and four runs scored. Cone's got a 23-game hitting streak, and he's too shy of the single-season school record of 25 set by Greg Keatley in 1976. And Cone is three games shy of the school's all-time consecutive game hit streak. 26 is the record held by Whit Merrifield. He did that during the 2009 and 2010 seasons. Sophomore outfielder Alex Destino is the Gamecocks' leading hitter, batting 349 on the year. And it was freshman right-hander Adam Hill getting the start in Sunday's Game 3. He worked five-plus innings, gave up two runs on four hits, three walks, and three strikeouts. Hill got the no decision. So he's 5-0 and with a 2.95 ERA. And the Gamecocks' three starters, the weekend starters, Kip, are combined 19-3 and on the year. So disappointing to lose the series to Georgia and to have this two-game lead in the SEC evaporate over the weekend. But all in all, Gamecock baseball is still having a fine year, and we've got some critical series coming up, starting with Missouri at home this weekend. Yeah, they do. I mean, you look back and you think of what the starting pitch has done for this team, and, you know, 19-3 and three is pretty special, especially when you're talking about, I believe it's two freshmen and a sophomore. Uh, so I, it's pretty daggum impressive. And I, I'd like to see him give Hill a chance to, to pitch some important innings a little bit later in the games because he's been pulled several times in the fifth and sixth inning where he's really been pitching well, uh, but I think they're just trying to protect him. You know, he's a freshman. They're trying to protect him. Uh, they're going to their bullpen, and, 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 and some may say, well, the bullpen was fresh and the bullpen was there, but, you know, it, it's um, – it's, it's, a difficult thing sometimes to do, you know, like what Josh Reagan has been able to do. I mean, Josh Reagan has been almost perfect all season long, you know, and he gives up two solo bombs and, uh, you know, those things are going to happen. And that, that's been my concern all year is Reagan just, it, and you know, some of the pitches he made on Sunday were actually some pretty good pitches and you have to kind of tip your cap to Georgia, but that that's the thing. I mean, when you got a guy that's throwing, uh, 84 to 88, um, even though he's left-handed as a closer, uh, you know, he's not going to get a ton of strikeouts. He's going to be a guy that's, even though he has, you know, gotten a couple strike, you know, decent amount of strikeouts this year, I still don't think it's him of a strikeout pitcher. He's a contact pitcher. He's a guy that I feel like could eat a lot of innings up for South Carolina. And, um, uh, it's, it's still a concern of mine down the road. I really do. It's, it's hard to say that because he's been so good this year, but, some of these better hitting teams. I just, um, you know, I'd love to see us have a guy throwing 93, 94, being able to come out and blow it out for an inning and strike out the side and, and be done. Kind of like we've seen with Matt Price in the, uh, you know, back in the, a couple of years back. So, um, you know, it's, uh, they, they've got to, they got to figure out and find two or three setup guys, you know, a, a long inning guy, a guy they can bring in to set it up for a closer. And if Josh Reagan's their guy, then, uh, and he certainly hasn't shown that he shouldn't be their guy. So, uh, who am I to, to second guess that? I guess I should say, but they are in a great position. South Carolina baseball is in a wonderful position. Uh, fans need to just stay behind them and, uh, be ready to be ready to have some great weather, hopefully, and some awesome attendance here in the next couple weeks of uh, baseball. It should be fun. All right, the Gamecocks are 29-8 and eight overall. They're 11-4 and four in the SEC, and that's the Gamecocks' best start in SEC play since the 2011 season when Carolina was 12-3. and three. And, of course, that team 
went on to win the national championship. Kip, five SEC series remaining starting this weekend with Missouri at home. Then it'll be Florida at home, at Kentucky, Texas A&M at home, and at Bama to wrap up the regular year. Florida, Kentucky, and Texas A&M all ranked in the top 18 in the country right now. The schedule is going to be tough down the stretch. It's going to be very tough. That's why I think it's, it's, it's tough to kind of go into a series expecting or hoping a sweep, but you know, looking forward a little bit past Furman this Wednesday, you, you've got to try to sweep Missouri at home. That's going to be a weekend. I still feel like that our bats are going to have to score five, six, seven runs a game at least uh, to win those games because I, I've seen Missouri play. They, they can swing it a little bit at times. They're kind of streaky. And um, I think that, uh, you know, we can't rely on our starting pitching to, you know, go out and throw seven, eight innings and give up two, three runs or less every single game. It's just not going to happen. It's awesome when it does happen. It's a beautiful thing, but you can't rely on it. So hopefully our guys will get hot. Uh, it's warming up a little bit. The ball should carry a little bit better. So uh, there should be some more runs scored as well. So, uh, you know, again, Gamecocks are in an awesome position, but uh, I do think this weekend coming up is going to be very important for them because, you know, you look at it, they're 11-4. and four. In conference, if you win nine more games out of your last 15, you know, that's what, nine and six uh, over the last 15 games, that puts you at 20 and 10, and that's a that's a pretty pretty strong mark. It really is. So I think all Gamecock fans, including head coach Chad Holbrook, would have taken a 20 and 10 season in the SEC prior to signing up for this year. So not, not saying that's where I want us to finish. I want us to finish better than that, but uh, they're in a great position. They really are. After a tough weekend, they need to be thinking a lot of positives and trying to learn from those mistakes they made this weekend because mistakes are designed for us to learn from them. And, uh, you know, um, I think Coach Holtz in football said it best when he was here, God gave us eyes in front of our heads, not in our back. Let's look forward. So uh, game cop players, coaches, fans, all of us need to be looking forward and getting prepared for Wednesday night in Greenville against Furman. All right, the Gamecocks coming off a one and three week. They've got Furman at Floor Field in Greenville on Wednesday, seven o'clock first pitch, and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday against the Missouri Tigers, who are four and eleven in conference play. Seven o'clock first pitch Friday, four p.m. Saturday, one p.m. on Sunday. Kip Balknight, our baseball analyst here on Gamecock Central Radio. Kip, we appreciate your time. Thanks very much. Thanks, Emerson. Go Gamecocks. All right, that's Kip Balknight, and I'm Emerson Phillips, and this is Gamecock Central Radio. Thanks for joining us, and we'll have another show for you on Gamecock Baseball later this week. 